I can tell the kids are taking a shower. The bathroom is it, it, it's a it's right right there above the studio. I've got lots to do today and so today just as an exception as an exception and this generally doesn't happen. It is very important for Ali and I. But just today she's taking care of the kids the entire afternoon. They're back from daycare usually at 12.30, 12 noon. And then they take a nap from 1 to 3 p.m. and then we're with the kids till the end of the day. But today she's gonna be with them from 3 to 7 and we are having dinner at 7. And the 6, 10 to 6. And I still have to record this video, another one. I have to finish composing just like 20 seconds of music and sending a few emails. So... We'll keep this video short and we're gonna call this a two minutes tips and tricks. So let's let's dive right in. Before we go, see, it's falling down. Remember the acoustic treatment? The great idea that I had how to, it's falling down. But I bought a nailer and I'm gonna secure all of them. Oh, today's video is about how to make woodwinds sound brighter. Someone in the comments is gonna be like, well, just bring up the high frequencies. No, it's fancier than that. I mean, yes, we're gonna bring up the high frequencies for sure, a little bit, just a tiny bit, but you'll see, uh, I, I've said this many times, uh, the, the secret is before you bring up, before you put the high frequencies, what you wanna do is you wanna cut a little bit, and I said this in yesterday's video actually, you're gonna cut a little bit, you're gonna carve out a little bit in that, usually that muddy area at around, from two to 500 around that area, sometimes a little bit more, but usually in that range, because those frequencies are masking the higher frequencies. And so by removing a little bit or carving out a little bit in that area, all of a sudden we will start hearing a little bit more of those higher frequencies and that instrument or sound, all of a sudden it's gonna gain a little bit of clarity and definition. Hmm, come on, come on. Eat this one. This guy gets stuck all the time and it takes forever to take the camera. Come on out of here. The reason is because this guy is a copy of the Manfrotto quick release plate. This is the kind of like the, I guess, Chinese copy or whatever. It just, it's just cheaper. The cheap copy costs $10 and the original Manfrotto, it's more like 37. And I've got like four of these because yes, sometimes I'm holding the camera like this, but many times I'll put it here in this tripod or I'll put it here, in this one here, um, or in this other tripod here when I'm speaking from that angle. And it is very convenient to have the same plate that clips in all different tripods, no matter what brand the tripod is. But I'm buying them on Frotto one right now. At least one, the one for this guy, because the other ones work just fine. This one is super annoying. So add to cart, proceed to checkout, Saturday, place your order. Estimated delivery, Saturday. Today is Thursday. How easy is to buy on Amazon? So we're gonna do three things here. First, we're gonna add a little bit of tape saturation. Then we're gonna add a little bit of EQ. And finally, we'll add a little bit of compression. Woo! It worked! Yes, 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 yes! I'm gonna get rid of this guy because I'm not using for mixing, just for composing, and it's a space that I could use on the table to place the camera. So this is the Woodwinds track, and this is in context how it sounds. I'm gonna solo it. The most important plugin of the three, the one that's gonna make a more meaningful difference is the EQ. So that's where I'm gonna focus most of the time. But we also have the J37, the tape emulation for a little bit of tone and, and, and adding richness and character to the sound. And then we've got a little bit of compression. I almost never compress or casual melodic instruments. I do compress percussion, but for melodic instruments, usually I don't. 
I'll explain why I use compression in this one. But let's start with the J37. I'm gonna bypass the EQ and the compressor, and we're gonna focus just on the J37. So this is without, with, without, Again, very subtle, but meaningful. It adds richness and character to the sound. All these words, but it just I like it. And uh, it makes it sound more pleasant. So now we're gonna go with the Q. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add a little bit a 10K and a 5K. And we're gonna get rid of a little bit of 180 and 100. These ones are shelves. These ones are bells. Here's the EQ, it's the API 550B. It's made by Waves. And I added two dBs at 10K. This is a shelf and two dBs at 5K. This is the important one, as well as this one. I cut two dBs at 180 and I cut a little bit of like two dBs at 100. And this is a shelf as well. This is truly the one that adds brightness and definition to the sound. This adds a little bit of edge and this one gets a little bit of that muddy area. This just had some of the low rumble that was in the sample before, after, before, in context with the rest of the instruments. So the woods are there doubling the piano and are there for color. It's not like they are gonna stand out too much, but what you may be able to notice is that when the EQ is bypassed, not active, then we can't hear them that much. And when I activate the EQ, now they cut through the mix a little bit better because they have a little bit more definition and brightness. And that's what brightness does. We can hear them a little bit more. One more time, not active. Again. And finally, compression. With compression, I'm not trying to compress the sound really. What I'm just trying to add is a little bit of intensity and presence. It's like, if I was talking like this all the time and then I add compression and then all the sudden with compression, it sounds a little bit more present and more clear. Sorry for the close up, that, I'm sorry. Shame. So just the woodwinds without compression, look here. With, without, and in context, without, with, without, and with, Without. So when I deactivate the compressor, we can still hear them, but not as clearly. And when I activate the compressor, it's not as much volume that we're adding, but present instead. I didn't want to bring up volume. I just wanted to add a little bit of intensity and presence. And that added to the brightness that we added initially. That's what I was trying to achieve. And that's how it's done. I am hungry. This is the end of the video. Subscribe for more. If you don't subscribe, die. I'll stop posting videos like this. So I mean it. See you tomorrow. Oh, free class, link in the description. Learn to compose orchestral music. I'm out.